Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules by Jeff Kenney. To Julie Willing Grant. September, Monday. I guess Mom was pretty proud of herself for making me write in that journal last year because now she went and bought me another one. But remember how I said that if some jerk caught me carrying a book with diary on the cover, they were gonna get the wrong idea? Well, that's exactly what happened today. Now that Roderick knows I have another journal, I better remember to keep this one locked up. Roderick actually got a hold of my last journal a few weeks back, and it was a disaster. But don't even get me started on that story. Even without my Roderick problems, my summer was pretty lousy. Our family didn't go anywhere or do anything fun, and that's Dad's fault. Dad made me join the swim, swim team again, and he wanted to make sure I didn't miss any meets this year. Kill him, Brandon. No mercy, Todd. Stop shivering, Greg. Chatter, chatter. Dad's got this idea that I'm destined to be a great swimmer or something, so that's why he makes me join the swim team. So that's why he makes me join the team every year, every summer. At my first swim meet a couple of years ago, Dad told me that when the umpire shot off the starter pistol, I was supposed to dive in and start swimming. But what he didn't tell me was that the starter gun only fired blanks. So, uh, so I was a whole lot more worried about where the bullet was going to land than I was about getting myself to the other end of the pool. Even after Dad explained the whole starter pistol concept to me, I was still the worst swimmer on the team. But I did it. But I did end up winning most improved at the awards banquet at the end of the summer. That's only because there was a ten minute difference between my first race and my last one. So I guess Dad's still waiting for me to live up to my potential. In a lot of ways, being on the swim team was worse than being in middle school. First of all, we had to be at the pool by 7.30 every morning, and the water was always freezing cold. And second of all, we were all crammed into two lanes, so I always had somebody on my tail trying to get around me. The reason we had to use two lanes was because swim practice was at the same time as the water jazz class. I actually tried to convince Dad to let me do water jazz instead of swim team, but he wouldn't go for it. This was the first summer the coach let us boys wear swim trunks instead of those skimpy racing trunks. But Mom said Roderick's hand-me-down bathing suit was perfectly fine. Your friends will be jealous because you'll be so fast. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. After swim practice, Roderick would pick me up in his band's van. Mom had this crazy idea that if me and Roderick spent quality time on the ride home every day, we wouldn't fight as much. But all it did was make things that but all it did was make a lot but all it did was make it but all it did was make things a lot worse. Roderick was always a half hour late picking me up, and he wouldn't let me sit up front. He said the chlorine would ruin his seat, even though the van is something like fifteen years old. Get in the back. Roderick's van doesn't exactly have any seats in the back, so I had to squeeze in with all the band equipment. And every time the van came to a stop, I had to pray I didn't get my head taken off by one of Roderick's drums. I ended up walking home every day instead of getting a ride from Roderick. I figured it was better to just walk the two miles than to get brain damage riding in the back of that van. Halfway through the summer, I decided I was pretty much done with swim team. team. So I came up with a trick to get out of practice. I'd swim a few laps and then I'd ask the coach if I could use the bathroom. Then I'd just hide out in the blocker room to, until practice was over. The only problem with my plan was that it was something like 40 degrees in the boys' bathroom, so it was even colder in there than it was in the pool. I had to wrap myself up in toilet paper so I didn't get hypothermia. That's how I spent a pretty big chunk of my summer vacation, and that's why I'm actually looking forward to going back to school tomorrow. Tuesday. 
When I got to school today, everybody was acting all strange around me, and at first I didn't know what was up. Then I remembered. I still had the cheese touch from last year. I got the cheese touch in the last week of school, and over the summer I completely forgot about it. The problem with the cheese touch is that you've got it until you can pass it on to someone else. But nobody, but nobody would even get within 30 feet of me, so I knew I was going to be stuck with the cheese touch for the whole school year. Luckily, there was a new kid named Jeremy Pendle in homeroom, so that took care of that problem. Welcome to our school, Jeremy. Slap. My first class was pre-algebra, and the teacher put me right next to Alex Aruda, the smartest kid in the whole class. Alex is super easy to copy off of because he always finishes his test early and puts his paper down on the floor next to him. So if I ever get in a pinch, it's nice to know I can count on Alex to bail me out. Kids whose last names start with the first few letters of the alphabet get called on the most by the teacher, and that's why they end up being the smartest. Some people think that's not true, but if you want to come down to my school, I can prove it. Alex Aruda, Christopher Ziegel. I can only think of one kid who broke the last name rule, and that's Peter Uttiger. Peter was the smartest kid in the class all the way up until the fifth grade. That's when a bunch of us started giving him a hard time about how his initials sounded when you said them out loud. Teacher, the answer to that question is P-U-P-U. -U. Yeah, P-U-P-U. -U. These days, Peter doesn't raise his hand at all, and he's pretty much a C student. I guess I feel a little bad about the whole P-U thing and what happened to Peter, but it's hard not to take credit whenever it comes up. I started that. Anyway, today I got pretty decent seats in all my classes and all my classes. Anyway, today, anyway, today I got pretty decent seats in all my classes except 7th period history. My teacher is Mr. Huff, and something tells me he had Roderick as a student a few years back. Mr. Hackley, you'll be sitting in this chair next to my desk. Wednesday. Mom has been making me and Roderick help out more around the house, and now the two of us are responsible for doing the dishes every night. The rule is that we are not allowed to watch any TV or play video games until all the dishes are done. But let me just say that Roderick is the worst dishes partner in the world. As soon as dinner is over, he goes upstairs to the bathroom and camps out there for an hour. And by the time he comes back downstairs, I'm already done. I'm ready to start. But if I ever complain to Mom and Dad, Roderick always pulls out the same lame excuse. My body is on a schedule. I think Mom and Dad are too worried about my little brother Manny to get involved in a fight between me and Roderick right now anyway. Yesterday, Manny drew a picture at daycare and Mom and Dad got really upset when they found it in his backpack. Mom and Dad thought the picture was supposed to be of them, so now they are acting all lovey in front of Manny. I love you so much. And I love you so much. I knew, who it re I knew who it was really supposed to be in the picture. Me and Roderick. We got into a big blowout over the remote control the other night. And Manny was there to witness the whole thing. But Mom and Dad don't need to find out about that. Thursday. Another reason my summer was kind of lame was because my best friend, Riley, was on vacation pretty much the whole time. I think he went to South America or something, but to be honest with you, I'm not really sure. I don't know if this makes me a bad person or whatever, but it's hard for me to get interested in other people's vacations. And then we are going to get on a boat and cruise down this river. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, have you ever noticed this freckle before? Besides, it seems like Riley's family is always traveling to some crazy place in the world, and I can never keep their trips straight. The other reason I don't care about Riley's trips is because whenever Riley comes back from one of his vacations, he's always cram he always crams it down my throat. Last year, Riley and his family went to Australia for 10 days, but from the way he acted when he got back, you'd think he'd lived there his whole life. Good day, mate. Another thing that 
Another thing that's really annoying is that whenever Rally goes to some new country, he gets into whatever fad is going on over there. Like when Rally got back from Europe two years ago, he got hooked on this pop singer named Joshi, who I guess is some huge star or something. So Rally came back with his bags full of Joshi, Joshi's CDs and posters and stuff. I took one look at the picture on the CD and told Rally that Joshi was supposed to be for six-year-old girls, but he didn't believe me. Rally said I was just jealous because he was the one who discovered Joshi. And what made it really irritating him was that now this guy was Rally's new hero. So if I ever tried to say anything critical at all, Rally didn't want to hear it. Joshi says you should respect your parents and follow your dreams. Speaking of foreign countries, today in French class, Madame Lefrere told us we are going to be choosing pen pals this year. When Roderick was in middle school, he had a 17-year-old girl from Holland as his pen pal. I know because I've seen the letters in his junk drawer. When Madame Lefrere handed out the forms, I made sure I checked off the boxes that would get me a pen pal just like Roderick's. But after Madame Lefrere read over my form, she made me start over and pick again. She said I had to choose a boy who is my age, and he has to be French, so I don't exactly have high hopes for my pen pal experience. Friday. Mom decided to start making Roderick pick me up after school, just like he picked me up after swim practice. I guess that means she didn't learn from that experience. But I did. So when Roderick picked me up today, I asked him to please take it easy on the brakes. Roderick said okay, but then he went out of his way to find every speed bump in town. Ouch. Crash. When I got out of the van, I called Roderick a big jerk. And then it got physical. Mom saw the whole thing unfold from the living room window. Mom made me come in, Mom made us come inside and she set us down at the kitchen table. Then she said me and Roderick were going to have to settle our differences in a civil manner. Mom told me and Roderick we each had to write down what we did wrong and then we had to draw a picture to go along with it. And I knew exactly where Mom was going with that idea. Mom used to be a preschool teacher, and whenever a kid would do something wrong, she'd make him draw a picture of it. I guess the idea was to make the kid feel ashamed of what he did so he wouldn't do it again. I will not break the crayons because that makes the other children very sad. Well, Mom's idea might have worked great on a bunch of four-year-olds, but she's going to have to think of something better if she wants me and Roderick to get along. I will not call Roderick names. Funny Rabbit. Wah. I will not push Gregory. Aye. The truth is, Roger can pretty much treat me any way he wants because he knows there's nothing I can do about it. See, Roger is the only one who knows about this really embarrassing thing that happened to me over the summer, and he's been holding it over my head ever since. So if I ever tell on him for anything, he'll spill my secret to the whole world. I just wish I had some dirt on him to even things out. I do know one embarrassing thing about Roderick, but I don't think it's going to do me any good. When Roderick was a sophomore, he was sick the day they did school photos, so Mom told Dad to mail in Roderick's freshman picture for the school to use in the yearbook. Don't ask me how Dad screwed this up, but he sent in Roderick's second grade picture. And believe it or not, it actually got printed. Unfortunately, Roderick was smart enough to rip that page out of his yearbook. So if I'm ever going to find something to use against him, I guess I have to keep digging. Wednesday. Ever since Mom assigned the dishes to me and Roderick, Dad's been going down to the furnace room after dinner to work on this miniature Civil War battlefield of his. Dad spends at least three hours a night down there working on that thing. I think Dad would be happy to spend the whole weekend working on his battlefield, but Mom has other plans for him. Mom likes to rent these romantic comedies, and she makes Dad watch them with her, but I know Dad is just waiting for the first chance to break away and go back down to the basement. Whenever Dad can't be down in the furnace room, he makes sure us kids keep away from it. Dad won't let me or Roderick go near his battlefield because he thinks we are going to mess it up. 
and earlier today I overheard Dad say something to Manny to make sure he doesn't go poking around back there either. I think I just heard some grunting noises coming from the furnace room. Saturday. Riley came over to my house today. Dad doesn't like it when Riley comes over because Dad always says Riley's is Riley ra because Dad always says Riley is accident prone. I think it's because this one time Riley was eating dinner here and he dropped the plate and broke it. So now Dad has this idea that Riley is going to ruin his whole Civil War battlefield in one klutzy move. Whenever Riley comes over to my house these days, he gets the same greeting. The basement is off limits. Yes, sir. Riley's dad doesn't like me either. That's why I don't go over to his house much anymore. The last time I spent the night at Riley's, the last time I spent the night at Riley's, we watched this movie where some kids taught themselves a secret language that no grown-ups could understand. Beagle bottle, burp, bop, bork, translation. At exactly 2.30 p.m., let's all drop our books on the floor. Me and Riley thought that was pretty cool, and we tried to figure out how to talk in the same language the kids were using in the movie. But we, but we couldn't really get the hang of it, so we made up our own secret language. Then we tried it out at dinner. Your pa, dad pa, smells pa like pa a woman pa. He, he, he. But Riley's dad must have cracked our code. But Riley's dad must have cracked our code because I ended up getting sent home before dessert, and I haven't been invited to spend the, and I haven't been invited to spend the night at Riley's ever since. When Riley came over to my house today, he brought a bunch of pictures from his trip with him. He said the best part of his vacation was when they went on a river safari, and he showed me all these blurry pictures of birds and stuff. Now, I've been to the Wild Kingdom Amusement Park a bunch of times, and they have this river rapids ride where they have these awesome robot animals like gorillas and dinosaurs. If you ask me, Riley's parents should have just saved their money and taken him there instead. Did you see any sharks fighting giant tarantulas on your safari? No, and sharks don't fight tarantulas. Well, at Wild Kingdom they do. But of course, Riley didn't want to hear about my experiences, so he just gathered up his pictures and went back home. Tonight after dinner, Mom made Dad watch one of the movies she rented, but Dad really wanted to work on his Civil War battlefield. So when Mom got up to go to the bathroom, Dad stuffed a bunch of pillows under the blanket on his side of the bed to make it look like he was asleep. Mom didn't find out about Dad's decoy until after the movie was over. She made Dad come to bed, even though it was only 8.30. And now Manny sleeps in mom and dad's bed because he's afraid of the monster that lives in the furnace room.